the second port on our Norwegian Fjords cruise was at Olsund. And as I was heading to the main dining room for breakfast, I could see the queue to get off the ship was already forming. We had chosen to go to the Pearl restaurant for our breakfast. It wasn't too busy and the toast and tea came out quickly. These were the menus that we were given and they were very similar to the breakfast that we had on Azura. And we had jams, marmalade and orange juice, along with another round of toast and some bagels. It was followed by traditional full English. I can't really fault the food here, it was both tasty and there was no hanging around with it being served. Good news because we had places to be. Much like the previous day in Stavanger, the weather here was cool and wet. So this was be another case of putting the waterproofs on, wrapping up and heading into town. If you're looking to do some excursions, this is a good place to pick one up. And this is where you'll pick up the Olsund tourist train. However, it's a very expensive way of getting around and I'll show you how to do it much cheaper later on in this video. And it's not exactly a big place, all you need to do is to follow the green footsteps on the floor and you'll find yourself in the town centre in just a matter of a few minutes. If you're planning on visiting Ausland, there are two main attractions here. One is to go to the Axton Viewpoint, which gives you amazing views of the town. And the second of which is to explore the town itself. The original town was pretty much destroyed in a fire in 1904. It was then rebuilt in an Art Nouveau style. So the architecture here is quite different to the other towns I've been to in Norway. Heard a lot about this place selling some of the best fish and chips in the world, although it was a little early for me. If you have tried it, please let me know in the comments below what you thought it was like. And now it's time to check out the town some more. Alsund itself is a fairly modern town. It only became a market in the 1700s. Although there is evidence of Viking activity here long before that. And being a coastal town, fishing is very important here. And there's a couple of statues to commemorate this. This is Fisher Boy, which commemorates those boys that went out to sea to fish. And the second statue is the Herring Wife, which was a tribute to those women who worked sorting the herring. And it looks as if fishing is still very popular here. And then we continued walking towards the harbour. And this is the Elsund Fishing Museum. We didn't have enough time to explore inside, but it was nice to see the exhibits and the ships outside. And along this causeway is the Molya Lighthouse. In 1904, there was a huge fire that pretty much destroyed the entire town of Alton. As most of the buildings were made of wood, the fire spread quickly. 
but despite the devastation, only one person lost their life. And the town was then rebuilt in the contemporary Jugend Steel style, which was the German equivalent for Art Nouveau. And later on, I'll explain more about the controversial benefactor who helped rebuild the town. And just ahead, you can see the Axler viewpoint, where we'll be heading to later on. And by the time I got to the lighthouse, the rain was getting quite heavy. The lighthouse has been here for over 150 years. However, there's now a hotel room inside. Now the honeymoon suite for the Hotel Brosendet. Only 12 square metres, it's sure to be a very romantic evening. But it's such a unique place to stay. The beautiful yellow building you can see is Aspoy School, built in 1922. And to complete the story of the reconstruction of the town, the controversial benefactor was actually Kaiser Wilhelm II. The Kaiser had been a frequent visitor to this part of Norway, and after the fire he was one of the first to send aid to the area. And this is the Kaiser Wilhelm II collection, which contains a large selection of photographs and artefacts. And not least of these are his swords and his famous Piggle Harb helmet. I hadn't seen this on any guides, it was just something I stumbled across, but I'm really pleased I did. And after a long few hours of exploring the town, it was time to head to an Irish bar to grab a pint. And this pub was called Dirty Nelly, highly recommended if you're in the area. As time was pressing, as I still had much to do, it was time to head back towards the dock. But not before heading into a nearby souvenir shop. It had the usual branded mugs and t-shirts, along with some of these fun looking trolls. Not sure about reindeer meat though. we decided to take a taxi to the Axta viewpoint, which was 250 Norwegian kroner, and that was for all four passengers. This worked out to be around 19 pounds. Now the tourist train cost 290 kroner each. And while that did include the tour around the town itself, it meant you'd only have between 10 to 15 minutes up at the viewpoint. If you'd like to save yourself some money, definitely take the cab. The taxi ride takes about 15 minutes. We had a really knowledgeable driver who shared a lot of the history of Alsund. He pointed out that the local airport is actually on an island and he also points out a World War II bunker that was built here during the German occupation in the Second World War. However, when he has German passengers, he tells them to look at the beautiful scenery out the other window. All of this area you can see is lying on an island, including the town. Mm. But uh, if you look at the right here, not the first island, but the second island over there, mm -hmm. there is our local airport. Oh, wow. <laughs> and to get out there, we have to drive under the sea. Oh, there is two tunnels under the sea here. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. And they are 160 meters below the sea level. Wow. And that was finished in 1987. And then it was the world's deepest and longest undersea tunnels wow. in the world. Yeah. But this is remind, reminds from the German. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's 
many German who look at uh, the right. And yeah. That's because when when I get German in a, in a taxi when I'm guiding, yeah. I always look at the right and tell them about the <laughs> island. <laughs> to focus on yeah, the, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the, the last. I am a bit of a history buff, especially when it comes to the Second World War, so I didn't want to miss this opportunity to go and check out the bunker for myself. However, with all the recent rain, the bunker was flooded, so I couldn't go inside. However, I wanted to see if I could get on top of the bunker. So I decided to walk around the other side and then I could clamber on top. The Germans invaded Norway on the 9th of April 1940 and the government used the Elson Coastal Radio Station to communicate with the United Kingdom. And this then led the Luftwaffe to bomb the town at the end of the month. And once the Norwegians had been defeated, this bunker system was constructed. Below is the bunker for the soldiers and on top is the fire control bunker with this steel roof. And due to the heavy resistance activity in the area, the Gestapo called Elsund Little London. And on the 8th of May 1945, the Germans surrendered. And after my little detour, it was time to meet up with the rest of my party. The main reason we'd gone here was to obviously check out these amazing views. And Norway is such a picturesque country. I'm so pleased we made our own way up here, so we have more time just to soak in this incredible scenery. And while we got a cab to get here, if you're feeling a bit more energetic, you can actually walk up these steps. There's a little cap inside the viewpoint, so we stopped in here to grab a quick drink. However, if you're feeling peckish, there are sandwiches and cakes available. There are 418 steps from the town park up to this viewpoint. Although walking back down was going to be a lot less strenuous. If you do fancy walking up, there's some seats along the way if you need to catch a breath. Regardless of which way you're walking, there are viewpoints along the way. And once I'd reached the bottom of the steps, I explored the park and checked out this statue of Rollo the King. I then had one last look at the ship before heading to get back on board. I then went up to an open deck so I could watch the ship sailing away and looked over towards the Axe of Viewpoint that I'd been at only an hour before. Dinner tonight was going to be in the speciality dining restaurant Kiel and Cow, which was going to be the perfect choice as it was one of our party's 40th birthday. To be fair, the cost of the speciality dining aboard P&O ships is very reasonable. Plenty of choice and even the most expensive steak is less than £20. I obviously had to go for the best beer on board the ship, Jolly Ollie. And for my starter, I went for the trout, which had such a delicate flavour. While others went for the baked Tumworth cheese with dipping bread, which is essentially British camembert. I went for the Prime Minister Burger, which p and say is the best burger at sea. The burger had blue cheese, bacon and salad, along with coleslaw and some skin on fries. I think p and were right, it was delicious. 
others had the spatchcock chicken and chips and the Cumbrian sausage, both of which were highly recommended. And as it was a birthday celebration, we ordered a cake and it only cost £10, which I thought was really good value. And we finished the night watching impressionist John Clegg. And we ended the evening listening to Maddie Wright in the Limelight Club. Oh. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. And you can also click the bell so you get notified whenever I put up a new video.